Every time I buy a new car, I hear my late father's voice telling me, it's a mistake. My parents never bought a car right off the assembly line. Every car was used. Dad's philosophy was, it's silly to buy new. You're just asking for trouble until it's been broken in. As if new cars were like tight shoes and bucking broncos. I didn't want hand-me-downs. I wanted to know what people meant when they talked about the new car smell. When I was about 12, the family car, a 1950-something gray Oldsmobile, needed transmission work. When Dad saw the mechanic's estimate, he sang, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be, and called Murray at the Oldsmobile dealership. That weekend, we met with the salesman on the crowded car lot just behind the showroom. A shiny sharkskin suit and narrow tie lent him an air of formality. With a warm, toothy smile, he shook Dad's hand with both of his own as he proudly pointed to the gem ready for the test drive. Just like a marriage broker, Murray knew how to set up chrome and steel love matches. It's the sweet two-tone job over here, he said, looking around as if checking for spies. I know the lady who drove it, he confided in a whisper. Her husband's a big shot. He buys her a new car every three years. Dad made a pshh sound, expressing his disdain for any dope who threw his money away like that. <laughs> Nudging my father closer, Murray's voice deepened. He spoke slowly as he enunciated each syllable. It's a cream puff. <laughs> the vehicle up for inspection shone in the sun. The roof and hood were gleaming white, and the trunk and rear were the blue of a clear summer sky. A graceful V of polished chrome bordered the two colors. It was beautiful, but it was still secondhand. The adults went off to talk, and I wandered into the foreign territory of the new car showroom. A white convertible displayed in the center of the floor boasted luxurious features like leather seats, automatic windows, and air conditioning. I daydreamed about riding in it as I touched the cold metal of the unattainable. When my father came in and found me gazing at this beauty, I said, Daddy, look at it. I wish we could get this one. He laughed and said, you better marry a millionaire. <laughs> The day he drove the car home, Dad tooted the horn for us to come out and take our first ride. Mom took her rightful place in the passenger seat while my sister and I slid into the back. Was that a new car smell? Mm, no, just Murray's aftershave. <laughs> we admired the soft fabric seats and I rolled the window down to wave to our neighbors. Mr. Crane was out watering his lawn, but he put down the hose and came across to admire the car and wish us luck with it. The Burax, the Schwagers, all had similar reactions. It wasn't every day someone on our block got a new car. Even if it wasn't brand new, it was still a big deal. They called out to us as we rode by, wow, hoo-ha, nice, it's a beauty driving good health. Dad drove that car and, its, and his subsequent used Oldsmobiles until he was 98 and reluctantly gave up driving. When I bought my first brand new car, I found out, like so many of my childhood misconceptions, that the new car smell is a disappointment. <laughs> It's not the perfume of success and privilege. It's chemical off-gassing. <laughs> I know, Dad. I should have waited until it was broken in. <laughs> <laughs>